Good day, everyone. My name is Bernard Barchi, and I'm with I'm representing a company called Wellspace. So I'm a two-star VP with Wellspace Agency. Now, if you take a look behind me, the money that you see there, I'm going to show you how not to lose that. Think about this. We've been doing this for so long of our lives. We take our money, we put it in a bank, we pay our bills, we lose it. So I'm going to show you how not to do that. And as I was saying, I am a representative. I'm a two-star VP, vice president for Wellspace. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen with you. And I'm going to get started on this powerful concept. So make sure you have a pen available to be able to take these notes. All right. So if everything's working the way I expect it to, you see my screen. <clears throat> Discover the secrets of the wealthy. Now, the wealthy have been doing this for hundreds of years, if not, if not 250 years. Uh, the strategy I'm going to introduce you to has been around that long. Now, I do want to ask you, okay, if you think taxes are going to go up, let me know. You think interest is going to go up? Do you think inflation is going to go up? You already see it happening now. And do you think uh, fees are eating away at your money? Because <clears throat> what I'm doing is those what I introduce you to right now, and if you say yes on the majority of those, and you be honest, you say yes on all of them because that's beating our money up. So we make our hard-earned money and we lose it. So our goal right here is to show you a strategy of where you can never you you can still use money, but never lose your money. And I call it, okay, what we're doing is we're going to introduce you. We're going to we're going to uh, eliminate these things I call wealth killers. Now think about if you have termites in your home, would you do anything about it? I sure hope so. If you don't, you know darn well that home is being eaten up. Well, that's exactly what's happening now with our money. All right, so fees, inflation, interest, and taxes are wealth killers of our money. They're just beating it up and eating it up. Now, we know that, and we're not doing anything about it. That does not build wealth. So we're going to discover the secrets of the ultra-wealthy. If you agree with me, the rich are rich for a reason, are they not? So I'm going to introduce you to a strategy banks, corporations, and the upper 1% use. Okay, so moving on here at Wellspace, our vision is to uh, pursue becoming the agency of the future. What we're referring to is we're going to teach a strategy that nobody is using. In, this agent, in, in the agency of insurance, we're going to change the way uh, you know, insurance is being sold. And however, it's going to be how you can use it. And this has been used by the upper 1% for a long time. So our culture to proceed cohesive, hardworking and committing to the highest standards of professionalism and integrity. If you look at uh, the well space over here, I'm going to go get a little laser pointer. Discover solutions. And that's what we're doing. We keep putting together items that are going to help build wealth for you because a lot of us can't think like that, but the rich are raised into this. So it's just part of their nature. So we're going to help get into that level also. So we have over 100 plus years of our combined experience in the financial industry. And we got, so we got some people that have been in all different industries that have put it together and are able to build these concepts that we're going to introduce you to. But the one strategy we're going to introduce you to has been around forever. Now, think of this interest, a savings account. You got money in a savings account, right? Raise your hand in your head. <clears throat> What's it doing? Think about a savings account. A savings account isn't a storage house. It's not a storage unit. It's savings. It's putting it in there and not touching it. And for it to continue to grow and build wealth. Do we do that with our money in the bank? I don't think so. I've been down that road and I'm, you're going to hear me say, been there, done that. You don't save that way. We think it's a savings account. We put it in the bank. We leave it in there. We, we take it. We need it. We take it out. Oh my God. We're never going to build wealth that way. All right. So I'm going to introduce you to one of the most brilliant mathematical minds of our times. Now I'm jealous of this individual and you'll understand why when you take a look at him, not because he's brilliant, because look at his hair. Uh, and at that age, it's incredible. So compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it. That simply means that money's going to work for you 
or against you. When you put it in a savings account and you take it out, it's working against you. When you're paying your bills and you got a hard earned cash coming in, and it's so easy to pay those bills going on. I mean, it hurts for us to release it, but we have to. So we're we're losing that. Okay, so we're we're gonna beat the uh, we're gonna take advantage of the lost opportunity cost by doing this. All right. So how money works? This gentleman here. Did you ever hear of the rule of seventy two? Okay, because what I'm gonna introduce you to is the power of compound interest. Now there's a word in here that you don't see. And the key is uninterrupted. You guys familiar with Warren Buffett? Two rules to make money. Only two rules. Think about this. Two rules to make money. First rule, never lose money. You're making that hard earned cash. You're spending that time. You put it in a savings account. You take it out of the savings account and you spend it. Did you lose it? Absolutely. What we're going to do is we're going to show you a strategy where you can do the exact same thing, but never lose it. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. So there's only one rule, never lose money. So power of uninterrupted compound interest. Now take a look at this. I'm going to show you a penny that doubles every single day. Now, if I handed you $3 million cash in your hand or a penny that I told you I'm going to let it double every single day for 31 days, what would you choose? Most people would take that $3 million. This is called the lotto, guys. You win the lotto, most of the people that win the lotto go broke because they don't know what to do with the money they just spend. Savers are losers. They take that cash and they start spending. Same thing's gonna happen with that $3 million. You're gonna go buy that car you want, pay off that home, purchase home, whatever you, you know, all these different things. Wipe your bills out, but you're gonna end up losing money, but watch the power of uninterrupted compound interest. So that penny, by day number five, you got 16 cents. And you're going to say, Bernard, man, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm glad I took that $3 million. Now, I want you to focus. When I click next, it's going to bring up the whole entire month. But take a look at day 15, because I like stopping there. Uh, and I just didn't fix the slides to do that. So day 15, you got a hundred. And this is halfway through now. You got 163.84. But that three million, you might have spent a million already. So now you got two. But we got 163.84. Now, if you take this out, this is a savings account. You take it out, it stops growing. Now you got to start over again. Day 16, there's that penny. So the idea of this is we're not telling you to leave this in there for and not use it. What we're telling you is you can put it in there and still use it. That's pretty cool. So that $163 in some sense, it's in there. You could take out, you know, you, you maybe, maybe you have 110 bucks you could take out, but your 163 is still in there. But take a look on day, and this is where I always overemphasize, day number 30 is when the compound effect, once it kicks in, it's a snowball, guys. It's just bigger and it's going to roll down hill, but it's going to roll uphill even faster. And I mean uphill because it's building your wealth. Downhill, it, it's just the momentum you're going to have for wealth creations off the charts. What do you have on day 30? $10 million or day 31, $10 million. What do you have on day 32? $21 million. This is why it's so important. So the rule of 72 is an investment strategy used by investors. And what they do is this is how they calculate how quickly their money is going to return. Because remember, their idea is to take their money and make money quicker. So they're never reinvesting into something that's going to give them a smaller rate of return. However, they do use protection, which doesn't generate a great rate of return, but then they take that which is a strategy we're introducing to, to reinvest into something to make more. Make sense? So what you're doing is the rule of 72 is take 72 divided by your interest rate is how quickly your money's gonna double. So if you have 72 divided by 1%, if you need a calculator, go ahead and pull it out. How long is it gonna take your money to double? 72 years. Some of us aren't on the planet that long from the day we're born. 
72 years to double your money. Now you're giving your money to the bank. You're putting in that thing you call a savings account that really you never save, you always take it out. That's paying you Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, 0 0.01. How many years is that gonna take you to double? Add two zeros on that 72. 7,200 years to double your money, guys. Do you think that's a savings account? You think that's an investment opportunity to build wealth? What's the point of even hand of our money to the bank? Been there, done that. I don't do it anymore. We, I use the bank and I use it for what I need it for, but I don't use it for wealth creation. All right, there's other ways to do that. So rule of 72, you got to take that into effect when you're doing it. So how, how does banks work? Think about this. Now, not a relative of mine. I know it looks very, very similar, but not a relative. Uh, but we are the depositors. See, you, you're, you're smiling like crazy. You got your paycheck. You're going to take that money. You're going to hand it over to the bank, which is the gateway of your money. Think about this. Your money goes in, and boom, that money has to move. Now, I talk about finances have to be like blood in your veins, guys. It has to flow. If your blood stops flowing, what happens to you? That's the same thing that has to do with the economy. The money cannot sit. When the government printed all that money during COVID, that was given to the banks to keep the economy flowing, but the banks held it. Now the banks locked it into the strategy we're talking about first. And then when they felt like people could start paying off these loans, when they would borrow money, then they started releasing some more. Okay, so they're the gateways to your they're the gateways to your money. They're gateways to all monetary functions. So nothing about it. It's only a business, guys. Nothing more than that. Okay, so I call it the mafia or the bad guy. So we are going to hand our money to the bank, and what's the bank's going to do? Okay, so and if you think about what we are when we do that, what are we? We're the lender to the bank. We're lending them our money. Banks don't have any money to make money. I mean, they don't have any, any, any assets whatsoever. They use our money to make money. And there's other businesses out there like that. Uh, Uber and Lyft, biggest car company out there, they don't have any cars. What about Airbnb? All these homes, they don't have a single home. And then GoFundMe. Everybody's pitching in, but GoFundMe's getting uh, wealthy because of everybody else. Brilliant mindsets on the individuals of that thought of the services that they have to offer us that we need. So we're nothing more than the lender to the bank. And what do the banks give us? They have to give us something to, for them to be, for us to be the lender. They give us a low rate of return, 0 0.01, 7,200 years. Been there, done that, guys. Don't do it anymore. And however, what they do is the money is liquid and it's guaranteed up to 250,000 by the FDIC. And you know, if all the banks shut down, only 5% of the banks can be covered. That's pretty scary. However, your money's guaranteed. But if you have 500,000, it's only guaranteed up to 250. Now your money's liquid. Go to the ATM. They got a cap. You can't take it all out. They tell you how much you can take out. And then you notice they can drop it anytime they want. All right, so not exactly a business partner you want to deal with that makes all the rules and regulations. So how do the how what's you know how's the bank's process? Think about this. When you need to borrow money from the bank, all right. So you hand them your money, but you don't want to use your money. You want to use theirs. So what do you have to do? You have to prove to them that you don't need the money. It's kind of scary, huh? You got to show them that you can pay this thing back. So what are they going to do? They're going to run your credit. They're going to see what you qualify for. They're going to set you up on a payment plan. They're going to tell you when you have to pay. Now, the strategies I'm using, there are none of these that we're talking about. So everything we have to offer does not have this. You don't have to qualify. You don't. Everything's the opposite of this, guys. It's incredible. This has been used by the upper one percent, or you know, for years. So if you don't make a, a payment, you own a home. You don't, you don't make any payments on the home. Oh my God, what happens to your home? Now you, you put a deposit down because you have to. Now, if you don't make that payment on your home, do you get that deposit back? Absolutely not. You lost all that. What if you're a, a car? You might wake up in the morning and that car is not there. It's rolling down the street on this uh, tow truck. 
All right, so once again, the bank's pool of money and they could repeat this cycle over numerous times. It's recycling the whole entire system. They got a system in place that builds wealth for them, not for you, but for them. Banks also invest. They take the money that you put in. Not only are they lending it, they invest it. They put it in real estate. They offer real estate loans, commercial and, you know, uh, and consumer loans, government securities. They have a thing called BOLI. BOLI is bank-owned life insurance. And the, part of the, the, the purpose of doing this, tier one asset, if you're familiar with a tier one asset, a tier one asset is the safest place to put your money by the government. There's no other place you can do this other than insurance. So the banks lock what they're allowed to get into these policies first for the protection. Then they're using other people's money and insurance companies' money to reinvest to start building their wealth. I say success leads clues, guys. Follow the ones that are doing it. Bank profit, the banks will lend the money out to borrowers, charging the borrowers a higher interest rate and profiting off the interest rate spread. They'll also set up these terms that are a lot longer. Deception's very, very bad that we're gonna be talking about later because the longer you take something out, the richer you're making somebody else. How do the banks leverage OPM? What is OPM? Other people's money. So the banks leverage your money, OPM. Now, what is leverage? Leverage is an investment strategy of using borrowed money to invest in various instruments that's going to give you a greater rate of return, okay? So banks use leverage and OPM at the same time. So we're the depositor, all right? So the depositor deposits money into the bank, the mafia, the bad guy, and the banks give out loans to the consumer or us, and we are other people. So the depositors hand the money to the mafia, and then the mafia is going to lend your money to them. Now, they have to pay you. That's where you get that interest rate. So I'm going to show you simple math, which is not true math, but it's simple math. So you're going to hand them the money. They're going to give you 1%, 0.01. Remember that, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase. Now, you had to qualify. Once again, we're showing you simple math. So they're going to lend you $1,000, even though you just handed them $1,000 and you want to use OPM, but you didn't realize you're borrowing your own money. They're going to charge you 10%. Remember, if your credit's not good and all that stuff like that, it could be higher. And they're going to give you 1%. Now think about the leverage on this math. That's 900%, guys. Fun facts. And I don't know why we call it fun because it's pretty disgusting. Interest revenue is 100 bucks. Interest paid is $10. They made $90 off of your money. Not bad. And just think, that's just you. How many people go in and out of that bank on a daily basis? How many people are borrowing money and a lot higher than that? And I guarantee the interest rate is probably even higher. Do you understand how wealth is created? <laughs> However, at least that way, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how wealth is created by not losing your money. Okay, so... Once again, that's how it works. You go 10 times 900% comes to $90. Banks can do this up to nine different times. That's the leverage of money. How many of times the average currency can be used? It's frequency, okay? So they could do that nine times. That's almost 9,000%. They could leverage that one, one thing. So that 1,000 comes in and all of a sudden they're just constantly recycling this. Here's your wealth killers, all right? So this one here, Wall Street. And what is Wall Street? Fees. And banks are fees. And Amazon's fees. And everybody's charging an annual fee. And then you get charges on credit card fees. Okay, so there's fees across the board. Then if you have business accounts and you're taking credit cards as a transaction, you're getting charged fees, merchant fees. There's fees everywhere. Kind of like fleas. There's fleas everywhere. We got to get rid of them. All right, so there's four silent destroyers, which we call the termites of your wealth. So they eat away at your wealth through fees, interest, inflation, and taxes called FIT. Okay, so fees, professionals that provide expertise for the client's decisions around money matters, personal finance, and investment is not free. Two to 5%, guys, they're charging you. 
in Walmart, I mean, in Walmart, in uh, Wall Street, in the it's stocks, and you got 401k or anything like that, those, you know, traditional numbered retirement plans. If the stocks go down and your money loses, you're still paying fees. The fees are there no matter what. And just so you know, Wall, Wall Street does not use the strategies that the middle class do. They use the strategies that the upper 1% do, okay? So we got to learn how to do these. So when people look for a loan, they look for the lowest APR. Get this all the time, you know, what's the interest on Apronar? Well, it's not really the interest that you should be concerned about. You should be concerned about the time you pay it back. It doesn't even matter what the interest is. I'm going to show you a couple scenarios into this. Take a look at a car, 4%. And it's going to be taken out for five years, $30,000 loan. Monthly payments are $553. Monthly interest cost is $116. So you paid in that five years, $3,150. That's a total of 11%. Credit card, same thing. Take a look at that, almost 40%. Now, the longer you drag this out and you do that minimum payment and you make this even longer, guys, you're going to kill your wealth. I'm telling you, you know it, but we still do it. Look at a home because we take out a 30-year mortgage because we could afford the payments. But at a 6% range, at a $250,000 loan, take a look, guys, you just bought a second home. And this is more expensive than the home that you were purchasing. 116%. We can't do that. We got to eliminate these wealth killers. We got a strategy for you. That's why we're talking about it. So moving in, U.S. families lose about 34% of every hard-earned dollar to finance charges. And add the, uh, the fees on top of it. So you're, you're looking at almost 40 cents of your hard-earned dollar right there, guys. So inflation, you know inflation's going up with 7% already just this year alone. They're averaging about, they're saying it's going to be about 6.5. This is the highest it's been in, oh my God, since almost the Great Depression. That's outrageous. And it's because the government printed all that money. And we thought it was a good thing. Somebody has to pay for that. And it's now time, everyone. <clears throat> so now you got to start learning these strategies to stop losing your money. So in inflation and economics, it's a general increase in the prices and the falls of the purchasing value of your money. That dollar is getting smaller, kind of rhymes too. The, uh, how, where, where's, what's being taxed? Think about this, okay? Taxes are uh, an item also. And then this whole entire area is going to talk about taxes. So our money's supposed to outpace inflation. Has to. Any of your investments have to beat that 7%. Now it's making it harder. Because now you got to get a 0.01%. You know what? They're not raising the interest they're giving you in the savings, but they're going to raise the interest in what they're charging. You want to keep working with the criminals? That's up to you guys. The, uh, we're going to show you how not to. So taxes, income tax. If you have a J-O-B, jump off the bridge just over broke. Been there, done that. If you have a job, you're automatically taxed. You don't have a say-so. Then you got to get taxed after you get taxed. Then there's excise, excise tax, uh, real estate tax, gift tax. There's so many taxes, capital gains tax. And there's taxes after taxes after taxes. Certain states, you're even taxed more. So be careful on your major states that uh, you, you get dinged on. So just showing you a dollar figure range of how taxes work. The tax rates right here, the more money, you, and you think this is cool, I'm going to make this much money. Doctors, lawyers, CPAs down in this bottom category, they get taxed at a higher tax bracket. How's the government make money? Taxes. That's the only way. You need to make more money. What do we have to do? Work harder. But the government can take this finger, push the button, and print money. Somebody has to pay that back, guys. Inflation. Okay, so the inflation rate is, you know, in constantly increasing. Goes up and down a little bit, but that our dollar figure is shrinking. So right now we've just introduced you to some of these wealth killers. Now, how much is lost in all this? U.S. families are losing 36% of every hard-earned dollar due to inflation and government taxes. It's almost 40 cents. So we're, we're looking at almost 80 cents out of your hard-earned dollar. So you got 20 cents to live off of for your financial future, guys. Good wealth building strategy, don't you agree? Now, you can be your own banker. <clears throat> BYOB meant something different in my college days. 
Okay, this one be your own banker, generate high cash value, use as collateral and borrow from it immediately. What are you talking about, Bernard? This is a strategy we're introducing you to. Okay, we're gonna teach you how to use life insurance, not buy life insurance. So what can you achieve with this strategy? You can, you can fund your dreams and goals. You can pay down debt. You can put payments for a new car, plan expenses every single month. You can, you can take control of your cash flow. You can go take friends out uh, at restaurants and use other people's money. It's just, guys, it's such a powerful strategy. The sky's the limit. There's so many things you can do. And it's a design. It's not us. It's what you do. Once you understand how to use this powerful vehicle, you do whatever you want. You want to try to get all your money into this. I'm telling you, if, if, if you, the wealthy did this forever. They parked 100% of their income into this up until 1984. Can't believe the government took that long. But you know, the government's a little slower. So government took up till 1984 to sit there and say, hey, you can't do that. Because when they lock it into this vehicle that we're introducing you to, they never touch their money. They use insurance companies' money. And then insurance companies' money they're using, remember, uninterrupted compound interest because they never pull it out. They constantly keep adding to that piggy bank. And it continues to grow. So now they're going to take insurance companies' money tax-free. All that growth is tax-free money because of the protection of life insurance. Life insurance is a powerful wealth-building strategy used by the upper 1% banks and corporations. We sell life insurance. The middle class has no idea how it really works. It's time to teach you how this. So take a look at the benefits. Appreciated asset protection. Use like a traditional bank. Build your own private land, uh, line of capital. I teach business owners how they can do this. They take insurance companies' money, but they're funding their business using this. So instead of using a credit card, making somebody else rich, you could make yourself wealthy personally and use your business to fund it at a tax write-off. Finance your future purchases, external investment strategies, access without penalty, tax-free, guaranteed compounding, uninterrupted. That should be bolded, except my apology. Uninterrupted compound interest. Every time you add to your piggy bank, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and you're using money, and then eventually the insurance company is giving you more money because of the compound growth. So how to turn your expenses into an asset. How do we create a legacy banking system? Now, this is ours. And I don't know if you ever heard of the infinite, I mean, the infinite banking concept. It's by a gentleman by name of Nash, Nelson Nash. I'll show you the book later. You can get and you can read. It's 94 pages. This gentleman created, and this is just using a strategy of how to use life insurance to become a bank. Well, here with Wellspace, we created a legacy banking system, trademark too, guys, <laughs> legacy banking system. So it's not a strategy. It's not a concept. I mean, it is a strategy. It's not a concept. We took it and we have now implemented to its finest, fullest capacity of wealth creation. This is a, a good idea of how it works. So once again, premium design. All these are designs. They're not purchased. You're not buying life insurance. You can't come back to me and say, well, how much can I put into this? As much as you can. That's what you want to do. So we're going to put premium in a year. Take what the government allows you to lock into this. Put it all in. If you can get 100% of your income into this, do it. But you can't. Government regulates life insurance. So we're going to have to purchase for the protection of life insurance, the cost of insurance. It's not a bad benefit, too. You're getting life insurance, but you're buying it for asset creation, for, you know, capital formation. It's, it's outrageous. Now, we purchase the least amount of insurance that gives us the protection that the government cannot touch bankruptcies, liens, collections, IRS, nobody can touch it. It's a private contract. Then we put the majority of it into what we call the savings account, but in correct terms, it's a paid up addition rider. That's your cash value. 
year number one is your worst year. Once you start putting it in there, it takes a little bit of time to build. But once you start that compounding effect, you're having access to more and more of your cash. The idea of this is to start building wealth for later down the road while you get to use it still now. You have the highest amount of cash value available. There's no other strategy to lock your money in and be able to take insurance companies' money out and immediate liquidity, all of it. They don't tell you what you can take out. If the cash value is available, it's all yours. They don't check your credit score. There's no hard inquiries. They don't tell you when to pay it back or what you got to do. So what we have to do and how it's created, it's a dividend paying whole life insurance issued by a mutual life insurance company structured for cash. Now, what is a mutual life insurance company? Stock companies? Dividend paying companies, which are mutual life insurance companies. Shares, you have to be an owner of the company. You have to buy shares in it. However, you have a policy and you don't have shares in it, you don't get any of the profits from it. There are CEOs out there for these share companies that say what is good for the client does not benefit the shareholders. So they don't help you to that extent. They're not overly concerned. They're selling you life insurance, guys. So this right here, you are the owner. You get the dividends. It pays to you. A lot of insurance companies don't use this strategy because they have to lend you their money. You are the owner. They have to. If it's available, it goes to you. If they lend it to you, they can't reinvest it. So that's why other companies don't use these strategies because it's not beneficial to them. So we have these carriers that worked with us to help this. We're taking this and we moved it into the legacy banking system. So cash value guaranteed interest plus dividends. Compounding uninterrupted should be all bold and capitalized growth. Immediate access to your money. No fees, risk, or penalties. And it's all tax free. I call it the vault, guys. Once the money goes into there, you close the door, lock it, boom, done. Use insurance companies' money from that point. You, did you just not turn yourself into a bank? Absolutely. And now you have unique borrowing features. Once again, immediate cash value liquidity, access to 100% of the cash value tax-free. Cash value appreciates like an asset, like you never took the money out. Remember, you're taking the money from the insurance company, not from your vault. So your vault is growing uninterrupted. Savers aren't losers. You just defeated rule number one of Warren Buffett. Never lose money. That's how you do it. It's the only strategy out there. Unique loan repayment plans. And this is just throwing it out there. Pay interest only. Pay any amount. Tell them when you're going to pay. All of a sudden you stop payment. Nobody's beating on your door and saying, hey, you missed a payment. Dividends pay for it. Or never pay for it. <laughs> You got to find out about that one. So you got to ask. And I'm telling you, that's just, it's really a good strategy. You have to pay for it later, but you don't have to pay for it now. What can you borrow money and not have to pay it back at that moment? It's the only vehicle out there, guys. So pursue your dreams, leverage our solutions. This is going to build wealth, guys. It's outrageous. And this is everything, just different scenarios. You can become debt-free by using this strategy. Paying off your debt, locking it into an insurance policy, using an insurance company's money to pay down your debt while you're building your wealth. Oh, my God. Education. Never put your child in debt because of a student loan. Plan it. These are all plans. The wealthy plan, they just don't go do. The middle class go does. We don't plan. We finance things. Well, the wealthy plan, they use these strategies to build it first then use the insurance company's money to get it. And then they use their bank, the, their insurance, which I call their bank, like a, and they finance it through their own insurance policy and paying themselves back plus interest. They're never going to put their child in debt for education. Vacations took them all the time. I always use this scenario. My God, could you imagine if I, if I knew this then and all the vacations I took? I save it in an insurance policy. I take insurance company's money. I go on vacation. I do it again next year. Save it up in the insurance policy. Take the insurance company's money. Go on vacation again. Well, I got two years worth of what I saved. And it's growing interest. 
And I'm taking better vacations because now the insurance company is starting to give me more money. That's how you build wealth, retirement. Strategies, what do you want to do with them? There's your down payment on a home. How about using somebody else's money? You got to save it up anyhow. You put it into the, the savings account at 0.01%. You take it out, you put it on a home. Savers are losers. You don't have the money anymore, do you? So you saved it up and you lost it. Makes sense? I know you purchased a home, except you bought a liability, not an asset. And we'll talk about that later. The, uh, so you take that money, save it up in an insurance policy, now put it down on the home. You never used yours. Yours is continuing to grow. You use their money to put down on a home. Now, they don't own that home. You still do it because you're using their money. Automobiles, here's how you finance it. You can get a free car by doing this. You can finance it through your businesses. You can do equipment. Once again, you create, you plan it. You don't finance it just because you can make a payment. Remember, you make somebody else rich the longer you pay them back. You want to take some time and plan, put it in an insurance policy, build it up over time, take it out, purchase the car, then pay the insurance policy back just like you would finance it. Where's all that money going? Back to your bank, guys. Is that not a way? And then all of a sudden you take it out for six years and you're paying it back. What did you get in six years? A depreciated car, all the, all the, uh, the principal paid back to you, plus the interest over what the insurance company charges you on the interest you borrow and simple interest from the insurance company and your dividends can pay it. So remember, there's all kinds of strategies for this. It's up to you guys how you want to do it. And all of a sudden, you know, six years later, you can go buy yourself a new car because it's growing uninterrupted and you have a lot more to take out. You can go buy an upgrade of a car. Outrageous strategies, guys. Turn your, turn your, at, your expenses into a strong asset. Here's how it works. Money goes into the bank. Okay, we hand it over to the mafia. And then what do we do with it from there? We pay our expenses, household expenses, mortgage, car notes, and all that stuff like that. And after we're done, we cross our fingers to see how much money we have left. Now we should be putting it toward investments, but a lot of times we're not sitting on a lot. And then we go by, now I got this. And then we start putting that in for vacations. Do you understand? We'll take that extra money that we have, put it in for a vacation because we got a plan for a vacation. But once again, you lose it. That's not a good thing. So an investment should be where you never lose your money. However, you still get to use your money. So right now, it doesn't work that way. So what do we have left over? No money. And we're doing this over and over. It's called the hamster wheel. I'm from Pittsburgh, called Groundhog Day. Same thing over and over. Now, what's the definition of insanity? It's doing the same thing over and over while expecting a different result. So guess what? We don't want that to happen. So we put your money, these are the two carries that we represent and we work with that help design these policies specifically for banking. All right, so Lafayette Mutual Trust. So the way it works is we hand our money to the bank, then we transfer it to our bank, and then from our bank, we transfer it back to the bank. That's how you do. So money goes into them, you take a policy loan from them, you put it back into your bank immediately. Three days could be back in your account. Now you use the bank to pay the bills using the insurance company's money while yours continues to grow every single month. Think about how much money you've eliminated on that lost opportunity cost that I was talking about before. So did you just not make new money in a new asset? So cash value is liquid, always increasing, continues to grow tax-free, no market risks, private protected from lawsuits, bankruptcies, liens, collections, annulments, <laughs> all those I was married three times. You know, I hate to say that, but if I knew this, then you can lock all your money into a life insurance policy. Plus, you get whole life, uh, term policy, and living benefits all built into it because you have to purchase life insurance. So if God forbid something does happen, the beneficiaries get something. But when you teach your family how to use this, did you not think you just changed the legacy for your family? BYOB, this is the only thing for capital formation. I'm telling you, it's the only strategy out there. I've been looking for them. This is all I see. So money, you can do anything you want with it. Like I said, you use this, use BYOB, become your own bank, borrow money, go to a restaurant. You're using somebody else's money to do it. This is how I was telling you, put money down on a home. 
save it up first. You're doing, and this is how I, I like I said, you can pick, you can buy a car, or finance your own vehicle doing this. So creation of capital with compounding uninterrupted savings growth, using savings to create wealth through the use of internal external rate of return and other investment opportunities. So the idea, and this is just showing you here, but another design is you take insurance companies money to reinvest into something to make you more money, a higher rate of return. Now, purchasing a home could be also. There's, it's always appreciating. So that is a good investment. Now, a car is not exactly a good investment, but it is when you finance it through yourself or through your business and you use it as a tax write-off. So invest into something that's going to make you more money. Now, people are into Bitcoin. This is the way you do Bitcoin. Put it into the insurance first. Take it out. Then put it into Bitcoin. Not only is it growing uninterrupted in the insurance, you now get to use insurance companies' money to invest into Bitcoin. Now you're winning on both areas. Tier one asset, the safest place to put your money, guys. Positive uh, arbitration, your money's growing for you. So here's some people that have done this strategy. You know who this guy is? Do we know who this guy is? Do we know who this guy is? Do we know who this lovely lady is? If you don't, I'll tell you shortly. This gentleman here, Walt Disney. And what was his strategy? How did it work? Back in the days, nobody wanted to lend him money for Mickey Mouse and uh, Donald Duck. He just didn't think it would work. Theme parks weren't a big thing back in those days. You know, they were scary and everything like that, too. That's why you see horror movies with uh, theme parks. However, he had a vision. So he ended up borrowing against his own life insurance. Now, this wasn't a strategy back then. It wasn't designed for banking. This was a traditional whole life policy that he built up cash in it. That Now he used insurance companies' money to start Disneyland. And do you not think he made his money back? Oh, my God. That is an external rate of return, a lot greater than the internal rate of return. That's the point we're making. So this gentleman here, Mr. Ray Kroc. McDonald's was born because Ray Kroc was able to use liquidity provided by his whole life insurance policy as his privatized uh, private bank, uh, family bank, funding the way as the biggest real estate investor in the world. Now, it's not McDonald's, guys. It has nothing to do with the burgers. It's all real estate phenomenal mindset on this gentleman but he had to use his whole life policy and he never lost his money so not only did it continue to grow in the insurance policy he was able to get a greater rate of return this person's been doing this forever this is the longest one they have more family banks than anybody out there they have more millionaires still in their family because of using this system the wealthy do not call it a death benefit they call it a wealth transfer. God forbid something happens because it's going to happen. You have to pass away. And when it does, the money is redistributed into the family banks and it pushes the value of the family up. So it's called uh, wealth creation. Okay. So one of the most wealthiest families in, uh, in American history, they've been doing this for a long time. This insurance is 250 years old. It's, it's been in existence before banks and even the IRS. The IRS came into play in 1917. So it ties their investments to the stock market during the Great Depression. So instead of putting their money into there, well, thank God he didn't, the Great Depression wiped out the majority of the stocks. They locked their money into insurance policies. So instead of stock markets, they funded to stack their income in life insurance. This is the reason why their wealth was off the charts back in those times. They were able to sustain. This lady here is probably the biggest one you can get also. She needed to use $3,000 from her life insurance policy because she didn't have any money. And she wanted to do this, this thing in her mind was called Pampered Chef. She was able to sell that business for $900 million. $300 investment from an insurance, not her money, somebody else's, to invest into something to make more money. Guys, I hope you, I hope you understand what I'm talking about and you see the value of this. So here's third-party references. There's that bank that I was, uh, the book I was telling you about. 94 pages, really good. And it even says in there in one of the chapters that if you can get 100% of your income into this, do it. You just can't. Government regulates it. However, remember, they can't touch it. They can only regulate it. So build your warehouse of wealth. And this one, the retirement miracle, the retirement miracle using a life insurance policy. Hmm. Do you know that life insurance was the retirement 
private pension plans. Not the strategy we're showing you, but life insurance was used for retirements till they sold it to the stock market called 401k, 403b, 529. So all those areas are now government regulated. And that's not the business partner you want to have, guys. Cash flow quadrant. Anybody familiar with Robert Kiyosaki? Four ways to produce income. Linear income versus leveraging and residual income. So showing you this right here. Put a line straight down the middle. I call this the matrix on the left-hand side. The matrix is not the real world, guys. The real world is over on the right-hand side. But if you take a look at here, the matrix is 95% of the population, but only 5% of the wealth. Taxes are paid on this side. Think about it. You got an employee. How's an employee make money? They got to give up time for money. Then you don't want to work for anybody again. Bernard, I'm done. I want, I want to be my own boss. I want to start my own restaurant. So you're considered self-employed. Once again, you're still giving up time for money. But you're not answering to anybody. You can put as much time or as little time in as you want. However, you got to run your own business. Now, all these two areas pay taxes. And it's only 5% of the wealth. Hmm. There's a wealth gap in America, guys. It's humongous. However, there's strategies we can use that could put us into this area, not as wealthy as wealthy, but if, if you have more money coming in than you have going out, that builds wealth. Paying down debt makes sense, doesn't it? Business owners. A business owners, who do they use? They use ease. <laughs> so Amazon's over here. You know that Amazon has never paid a tax since day one. Biggest company out there, never paid a tax. However, all their ease have to. And the E's have people working for them to make money. That's a business owner. However, the investor is where you want to be. You want to own assets. And the reason why Amazon doesn't pay taxes is because they're constantly reinvesting in their business. They're taking their money to reinvest to purchase assets. You need to own assets. So the idea of the insurance is the protection that you can use to think about how you can now use for investment opportunities. So investors do not pay taxes. They have money coming to them. If you owned a little duplex, that's monthly income coming in every single month. That's incredible. Rental properties, anything that generates passive income coming to you. 95% of the wealth is run by 5% of the population. Don't you think that's a little unbalanced? We're in the matrix. We don't know what we don't know. We don't learn wealth building strategies. We're teaching you how to still use your money, but capture it while it continues to grow that is a strategy used by the upper 5%. Okay, so opportunities in the industry. Used to be a chef. If I can do this, anybody can. You just got to understand that the real world is not real. I mean, the, uh, the matrix is not real. The real world is the real world is real. And you got to learn what goes on into there, even though you've never learned it. They don't teach us in school. They should but they never will. Trying to figure out how to get it in school, but it's never gonna happen because that's not what the school system is about. They don't wanna teach you to build wealth. They wanna teach you to get in the matrix and stay in the matrix and pay taxes because the real world doesn't. <clears throat> so our opportunity, multi-tier networking. Okay, so get an insurance license. The only thing you're never gonna have to worry about again. It's the only industry that's ever made money, Great Depression, 2008, and everything in between. Only industry. I looked for them. That's the only one I found was life insurance. Wealth building strategies using it. Do not sell life insurance. Teach people how to use it. Or teach your family how to use it. It's powerful. Plug and play system. We can, you know, no experience needed. All you got to do is say, sit there and say, I want to do something. I want to change my life and I want to help change my family. And not only are you learning it and helping other people, you're teaching your family at the same time. Very powerful. National wealth building. Now we teach you how all this works. We walk you through it. Okay, so we help you all, all the steps of the way. So it's not as though you, you're, you're just into this. We're going to plug and play systems. We're going to walk, you know, everything. So you have a full mentoring by the people that have been doing this. Multi-agency override systems. Now, once again, rental property, money coming to you. Now, the wealthy, just so you know, have numerous sources of income, not just one. A one-legged table got destroyed during COVID. You need other sources of income, rental properties or some. This here builds overrides and residuals. 
that's income coming to you while you're still doing some stuff. All of a sudden, boom, you're starting to get some checks. No experience needed. All you got to do is be gun ho and hungry. So that's it. That's my presentation that I have. Very powerful. Like I said, you, you do want to get you, you want to get more information. Knowledge is knowledge is power, but only and when you act upon it. All right. So there's third party references out there. Learn the infinite banking concept strategy. Come back and then we're going to show you how the system works to build wealth. All right. So in closing, did you see the value in what was shared with you today? Should say yes. Would you and your family benefit by applying these concepts? Should say yes. Do you think others may benefit from seeing this presentation? Should say yes. The way I put it, guys, I said, this is like, you know, Stevie Wonder could see the value behind what we just introduced you to today. All right. So that's it. So for more information, get in contact with the person that shared this video with you. That's all I have. Like I said, a very powerful concept. So learn it and love it. And let's let's get you going. Thank you very much.